The White Porch Conversations. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to White Porch Conversations, and we would like to welcome Kelly to the White Porch. Now, your last name, I think I've always said it correctly. Let me try. Eisler. You got it. Okay, Eisler. Just go Ice Ice Baby and then add the Ice one. Ice <laughs> Baby. That you know, We're already going in a good direction <laughs> today, so this is good stuff. Yeah, so I'd always said Eisler, but I don't think that I'd ever heard you say it, so I wasn't yeah. sure if I said there it correctly. Go. Okay. Um, so there you go. Do you know yeah. how to say my last name? <laughs> I'm going to say it, Belangia, but I know it's Belangia, yeah. Belangia. Yeah, none of us say it right in America. It? So yeah. Now, we say Belangia, but it, like, it. Belangia. as far as the Italian pronunciation, when I was in Italy, I kept everywhere I would go, I'd ask anybody, do you know how to say my last name? <laughs> and so uh, I still don't have any idea how to say it. So, it well, um, it's awesome to have you today. Thank you. Um, she's kind of new to this community yeah. um, and our community at Faith Community. Uh, she comes to us via Washington, Georgia, yeah. but that's not home. No. I mean, it's home now, but that's not where you're. So where are you from? So so that's always a great question that people ask. So I was born in the military, so I've traveled my whole life. Yeah. and um, But I've raised my kids in, in the Atlanta area. So okay. that's why I call home now is the Atlanta area. But we moved to Tignall about five years ago. Okay. About a farm in Tignall. Yeah, I know yeah. That, that you had moved... Uh, here from the Atlanta area yeah. and some of the church background that you have is some that I'm really familiar with. So that was always yeah, really interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so um, the first thing that, you know, I always like to talk about with people is tell us a little bit about your faith journey. Um, where did it start? Um, okay. How have you navigated through okay. your journey to okay. where you are now and where are you now okay. in your in your own mind. I know a little bit mm. about your faith journey and there's a little bit of your background that I'm going to actually talk okay. about a little bit. So just okay. tell us just tell us your story okay. if you will. Okay. So so my story is I, I was born in a Christian home. I was born um, in a Catholic home, a uh, very devout, very strong um, Irish uh, Spanish Catholic upbringing. So we did go to church every Sunday. I did the CCD program, um, all of that. So I was grateful for a family that, that we had God in the house. We uh, went to church every Sunday. We're very connected in a family sense that way. Yeah. Um, you know, went off to college and stayed connected. I always stayed connected, even though a lot of my friends may not have. I just felt that almost like I, I can't get through life without going to church. But it was more of um, sometimes out of guilt yeah. than it was a relationship. It's an obligation. Yeah, 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 more of an obligation. So, uh, you know, and then going on into my adult years, uh, getting married, having five children, and, and my kids all went to Catholic school. Um, okay. So they all went to Catholic school in, in the Atlanta area, but um, where there was the, uh, everything was really good, but where I felt the, where my faith kind of shattered a little bit and things kind of fell apart and unraveled for me was I got a divorce. Mm. And if you know anything about the Catholic Man, faith, yeah, that's a tough... That's no bueno. No bueno. No bueno. No bueno. Yeah. So there are certain things that they expect you to follow, um, annulments and things like that, and uh, I didn't go down that route. Yeah. So there are some things in the Catholic Church that you cannot participate in after a divorce if right. you have not gotten annulment. So um, there was, a, in my early 40s, a very um, weak spot in my life um, with feeling accepted and going back to church. So I strayed. I well, strayed yeah, and that's, that's actually, it's I didn't know that part of your story, so that's okay. interesting. So, you know, I know we have a lot of people that... Um, that go through such similar situations. And, and I'm not talking about necessarily the Catholicism part of it, but the part of it where my marriage is falling apart, the church is yeah. in some sense turning their back on me, you know, um, for lack of a better word. Yeah. I, I don't know that that's necessarily the way everybody feels or the way that you felt, but uh, for, you know, there, there could be a lot of ways to describe what you feel. But just knowing that, you know, that the church is looking down on you right. in such a way instead yeah. of trying to heal you. Um, you know, man, what a what a powerful testimony that yeah. you have now yeah. to share with people who go through that. So, like, for anybody that may be listening or watching yeah. that is in that type of situation that, like, they're going through something that's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. And they may not even be exposing it because they're worried about something Correct. like that. You are. Um, they're yeah. trying to cover it up rather than actually heal it. Right. Um, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse. You and know. it did. Because what, 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 what would you tell them? <laughs> they need to reach out. Um, yeah. I was not I was acting and living out of fear. Come on. And I was protecting my children. 
my kids were all still in Catholic schools, so you can imagine. Hmm. My kids are in Catholic school. I'm teaching in a Catholic school. Oh, and wow. I'm, and I'm divorced. Yeah. So that did not bode too well for me at that yeah. point. And uh, so I kind of flew below the radar. Um, we, we navigated through high school years. But as a mama, a single mom now, five kids, my focus was on how to still keep my kids focused on God in the house and not be angry about what we were going through. Right. It was a really tough season in our life for me and the kids and me still trying to kind of play above the line and, and be that strong Christian mom in the house. But I was dealing with anger and and feeling rejected. And so it was, it was several years of, of a tough road for all of us. Yeah. And the kids talk about it. We still talk about it. Um, we've moved a long way down the road, though. So, yeah, how many years yeah. ago was that? Uh, that was, oh gosh, that was about 12, 13, 12 okay. years ago, maybe. Yeah. yeah, so they were all still in school. Yeah. Uh, middle school, high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing um, how many people go through different things. And, and again, I'm not in any way, shape, or form um, uh, saying that, oh, you know, divorce isn't bad. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, it's it's horrible mm -hmm. on everybody horrible. involved. It's, yeah. it's a tough situation. Um, I do a lot of premarital counseling. The first thing that we do with people is we say we go into this thing saying, you know, divorce is not mm -hmm. an option because we know the pain that divorce hurts. I mean, we know the, the pain that divorce causes. Yeah. But on the other hand of it, having people around us that are going mm -hmm. through those struggles and then mm -hmm. us as the church, you know, as the family of God, yeah. you know, not being able to be there for people to yeah. help them heal and help them get through that uh, difficult, dark, dark time. And again, yeah. there's a lot of things, not just divorce. Um, it's, it's amazing how often that happens to people mm -hmm. and how that is one of the things that does push people away the most right. um, is is just that sense of, of as you said, I, I like the way I, I would have probably not thought of it from that word um, from my perspective, but as you said, fear. Exactly. Living yeah, in fear. Yeah, fear. Yeah. Fear of what people are thinking, fear of what people are saying, fear of what God is thinking, fear of yes. what God is thinking. Yeah. I mean, just so many different aspects mm -hmm. of it. It's like, mm -hmm. man, how, how much of a disappointment am I? Right. You know, how much of a failure am I? Mm -hmm. And you're having all of these questions go through your mind. So yeah. you're right. Stay connected. It, stay that, connected. That's what you said. Stay connected. And, and really, honestly, if I could help and add value to anybody that would be going through this is... Um, reach out, like, I know for me, it was tough to even think about reaching out to anybody in a different denomination, because mm -hmm. all I knew were right. the Catholic priests and deacons, so, like, I didn't know, like, it's okay to maybe find some friends in, the, in a different denomination, and that's okay. Right. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I held back and was so reserved and, 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 and lived in fear, and out of fear, I did not take steps. Yeah. I did not take the steps, so it held me back for years of my life. So, th and that's actually the part of the story that I did know. Um, so talk about that for a minute. So like all you knew your whole life mm -hmm. um, was this one for, uh, and again, for lack of a better word, there may be a better way to word this ideology, yeah, um, you know, mm -hmm. perspective, yeah. if you will, you had this one perspective, you've been raised in it, yeah. your kids have been raised in it. Um, you had never really been exposed to um, you know, a, a lot of other perspective in the Christian faith um, and then having to then start navigating the waters of, okay, how do I take a life that has been in a bubble, mm -hmm. a faith bubble, right. um, and bust out of that bubble to expose myself to new things while at the same time making sure that I'm only trying to search for truth. Right. You know, because you can you can bust out in rebellion mm -hmm. and just take hold of any little thing that you want because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what you want to do. You want to you want to bust out of these bubbles that we put ourselves in to find new truth, new revelation, new mm -hmm. new kingdom ideas, new Jesus ideas that um, that may be fresh. Comple completely unknown to you, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where your journey led. Was they saying did. because yeah. you being from a Catholic, I know there are a lot of people that are watching right now um, that they can't necessarily relate to a Catholic background because being in the South in, in a small town, um, that's not necessarily the big thing. But anybody you know from from cities or up north, mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a big thing. But around here. While they would look at you and think, wow, you were Catholic. But here there are people who never know anything, but I'm a Methodist. I'm a mm -hmm, Baptist. Mm -hmm. I'm an Assemblies of God person. I'm, you know, we could go on and on and on. Yeah. So we still have those same sects. And we have a lot of people who still 
don't really bust out of that bubble. So okay. I just think that part of your story is incredible. So yeah. what did that look like so, for you? So all that went down. All now went you're down. kind of forced to bust out of a bubble, yeah. basically. Yeah. So I was in a, you know, <coughs> I, after uh, a few years of not going to church anywhere, um, not not know, and and part of it, part of my story is too in my life, you know. And I wanna I wanna say this though, I'm so grateful for my parents and a family and absolutely of taking yeah. us to church. I will never. I'm, I'm so grateful. Um, but then you're a grown woman with five kids, and then uh, and then we're not going to church, you know, because yeah. I didn't know where to go. So so uh, which is the which is the story for a lot of people. That is exactly the way that it happens. People that were raised in church, yeah. grew up in church. There's just this season of their life, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they go through. It puts them in this situation where they find themselves isolated right. from it. Right. So that's yeah. that's something I think a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. So I got invited to a few churches from different people over a course of two or three years. I said no every single time. And the reason was I said no. Was it because your background yeah, or was it because, because you were fearful that they were going to be like everybody else? No, it was out of, in my mind, this is a mindset thing that I lived with for years that that going to another church or even trying to walk in the doors of another church of any denomination, I don't care what it was, was not right. Mm -hmm. Like I truly wasn't serving the Lord by doing that. And there was wow. a guilt in me. That's amazing. Like I felt very guilty. Um, so thinking of going to uh, any church. And then, so I got invited to a non-denominational church. Didn't even know what that meant. Non okay, so everybody comes. It's just a, a melting pot of, of, you know, everybody. We can relate to that. And, and so <coughs> I'm like, okay, there's got to be other, you know, people like me that just had. We tell know, everybody felt, we're just yeah. a pot of gumbo. It's whatever like we it. get. Yeah. We just put it all in the pot yeah. together. And we don't even know what all's there. Yeah. So, so. I went to this church and, um, and the, and I went, you know, you gotta remember being raised Catholic is very reverent. It's, it's a, if you've ever been to Catholic Church, it's just it's beautiful. It's it's just um, the whole way they they serve and they and they teach and all that. So I go to a non-denominational church. And it's not our church. Let no, me no, let me read. No. Let me tell you what the story she's telling right now is pre, pre weird faith community church. Yeah. This is a different weird church. Correct. So let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, and it was big church, uh, big mega church, and. Uh, band up there, people walking in with coffee, and I'm like, <laughs> what in the world is happening here? So I just really almost felt like I was walking to a concert. Like, I really, really did. If I'm going to be perfectly bold and transparent. So I was like, okay. So I sat there, and the lady that invited me was one of my mother's dearest friends. So she's like old enough to be, you know, my mom, grandma. So I'm sitting there, and I remember to this day, my first time, I didn't take my kids either. My kids were all at home. I'm like, mom's going. Y'all are staying home. And I will come back and tell you about it, but you're staying home till I get back. And uh, I go, and she looks at me, and she's like, you can go ahead and wipe off that deer and headlights look right now. And I'm like, because I'm like this. And so um, I relaxed. Believe it or not, that message, I'll never forget it, was 12 Stone Church, Central Campus. And the pastor, Pastor Kevin, PK, they call him, he did a message on getting, it was a six-week series on getting the pink elephant out of the room. Building family units stronger by getting the pink elephant out of the room. That was his. It was the first week he was starting it, and I'm like, "That's my family. That's mm -hmm. us." Wow. He's speaking straight so to God me. So God just put yeah. you right where you needed yeah. to be. Yeah, there were like two thousand people in this building, but he's talking and he to was you. looking straight yeah. at me. So I go home. I go home. This is eleven o'clock service. I go home and I am on fire and I'm crying and I tell the kids, everybody get up, get dressed. I don't care what you have on. <laughs> and they're used to dressing for church. Like we, you know, we're not wearing our little jeans with t shirt. That's yeah. But I'm like, I don't care what you put on. And my oldest son had two boys spend the night that night, the night before. And I said, Y'all get dressed too, everybody's coming. <laughs> Loaded up seven kids and we went to the one o'clock service that day and that's how it all started for us. Wow. And I told my kids, let's give it six weeks here. He's talking about building the family unit stronger and getting the pink elephant. And we had some big pink elephants in our house. And mm. I'm like, It's time. It's time. Wow. And that's how it all began for us. And and at the time you're still single mom? Yeah. Still, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. how God Yeah. Just, I was a single mom till they all got out of high school. He was, as the song says, that's, mm -hmm. uh, he was Jaira in that moment. He was the one that provided exactly yeah. what you needed mm -hmm. at the exact time. Yeah, um, yeah. that's amazing. It was, uh, it was so transforming in that moment for me. Um, I had not felt that spirit or energy, or I was like bursting at the seams of just like God is still there, like He never left, and I thought He did. 
Mm. And I get emotional because I, I, I really thought he left. And I didn't know what Man. to do as a single mom. And I wanted my kids to know he was still there, but I didn't know how to show him that. It was just that, that hard of a season, but he was still there. And the best gift I gave my kids was having them stick with me that six weeks. And we committed as a family, and we went. And my daughter still goes there today. And how many years has it been? Wow. Mm-hmm. Man, that, that, well, listen, we could just call it right now and just hit <laughs> cut because oh. that line that you just said right there that just said, I really thought that he had I left. I really thought he left. And yeah. he didn't. He was mm-hmm. there the whole time. Yeah. I think that that's going to be something that somebody that's listening is yeah. going to really receive. And I hope that if you're listening, I hope that you will receive what she's telling you, and that is in those moments where you mm-hmm. feel so isolated and you feel so broken yeah. and so distant from him. He is, you know, the Bible tells us that uh, he draws near the brokenhearted. I mean, that's what the Bible, mm-hmm. he, we don't draw to him. He actually draws to us right. uh, in those broken moments. So, wow. And so, um, so you start attending there yeah. and your story just continues from there and you just started, I guess, a discipleship journey really I is, did. is did. it wasn't a thing where you're, ex- you're not discovering God, you're just discovering new things about him, you, you know, yeah. because you're a person of faith already. Yeah. You've been raised in faith. That's yeah. something that you always knew. So now you, I guess, step into more of like true discipleship of saying, okay, now I'm going to grow. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to grow, but the biggest thing for me, um, Pastor John, was truly knowing now that I am his daughter. I never looked at it as I'm his girl, and I I have this relationship with him. Like, I never even said the word relationship. It was like, here's God, and here's Kelly, and... I'm going to go through the motions and go to church every Sunday, and I'm going to make sure my kids get what, you know. But there was never this um, blending or molding of, like, a relationship. Yeah. Like, he's my buddy. He's my friend. And I never, never saw it that way until attending that church. And they, they spoke to us in that manner. And my kids, we all learned together in that season um, that he was our friend, and he's um, always there. And it, so we developed a relationship. I, I can honestly tell you, I never had a relationship with him. Yeah. And now I feel like he's, I'm in the car driving here and I'm like, hey, how's it going with you this morning? Like that type of thing. I know yeah. that sounds kind of weird. No, but, it doesn't but at all. Having that deep relationship and that he knows my name. He, he knows on. Kelly now. And he, I'm not saying he didn't know me back then, but I, I'm wondering if like he, you know, if something had happened and, and, and I had passed or something, would he have known me? Because I didn't, I didn't search him out in a relationship form. And to me, that's the most beautiful thing about this journey for me personally. I'm still, I feel like a newborn baby in my relationship with God because I finally can say I have an amazing relationship with him. And everybody, if you, if you just trust and you let... God has so strategically, since I've moved here to Wilkes County, placed people. Because when I moved here five years ago, I was in a broken place. Mm-hmm. I was grieving. I was having depression. I was I was angry. Um, my mother had passed suddenly, so I was in another tough season of my life. And like God, what are you doing? You're, I'm leaving the city. I don't want to leave my children. Um, my mother's gone. What in the world, you know? And I just felt very shaken up and rattled. But God knew he had to do that to me because at that point, he just stripped me down to bone, like nothing. He said, I'm going to build you back up, but I'm going to strategically over these next few years put people in your life. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. Yeah. you know. And then here comes the Maddens. Here comes Becky Stover. Here come people he strategically helped to just, just build me up and see that there is a relationship there. And so I have such valuable people in the last short few years of my life. You. I mean... Mm-hmm. I had not been to church in about eight months, almost a year, and I'm talking to Trevin and Carrie Burris, and he just says, hey, you want to join us in church one Sunday? I'm like, sure, and never had heard of Faith Community up until, what, last summer maybe or fall, and, um, you know, so again, I I can sit here and just by name and know that God has strategically placed people in my life to say, I've got you, Kelly. You're you're growing through these people, and I'm I'm making sure this happens, and this is our relationship. Yeah, relationship. I mean, yeah. it sounds like what you discovered um, is exactly what we talked about on Sunday. Is what we hope to help people discover, and that is just identity. His yeah. identity is our father. Our identity is his child, mm-hmm. uh, and that transformational idea. Because, like you said, 
you never had a relationship with him. You had a great relationship with the church. I did. You had a great relationship with the church. You mm-hmm. you uh, you um, knew the church. Mm-hmm. You understood the church. Uh, but that relationship with him was what was missing in your life. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it just makes life so much more joyful yeah. and so much happier when you wake up and you can just say, "What do I need to do for you today?" I'm walking, I'm walking in the footsteps, and you. Everything I'm doing today, I'm serving you. And it just has changed my world. It's mm. changed my world to have a relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. So now, <laughs> um, man, you do a little bit of everything. I do. You I are just it. like on fire. Yeah. You are just like a go-getter. Yeah. You're one of those people when they describe go-getters, <laughs> you're a go-getter. It's like, oh, no, what I can I do? Pr- <laughs> what can I do? I'm constantly looking yeah. for new things that I God am. can put into my life that he can use. So t- so I know I know you had a business, uh, yeah. and that business, you just closed the actual storefront of it, but you're doing yeah. some other stuff mm-hmm. a little bit of a different way, taking more advantage of letting go of the overhead Correct. and focusing more on what everybody's doing, and that is online. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apart from that... Mm-hmm. Um, you invest a lot into training and leadership. I do. And yeah. uh, you just got back from doing a seminar that you led out in Phoenix. I did. Uh, yeah. So tell everybody a little bit about oh, what you do. Yeah. So, um, um, and then tell them your heart. <laughs> tell, them, tell them what you want to see them become. I mean, I'm not asking you to do what you do yeah. um, you know, to everybody, but just tell us a little bit about that. So my heart and my passion is children. Um, I have such a strong connection with kids, teenagers, college kids. I always have. And um, so I anything that has involved children, helping them grow and who they become. And it's I was a teacher for 22 years in Atlanta, loved education, loved teaching. But more than that, I love the relationship I built with the kids. Um, it was not about the mathematics and the language arts and the social studies, although I had to do that. And we did it. And we did it well. It was about knowing these kids in the classroom and what made them tick. And, yeah. and unlayering and get to know Susie or John. And because I knew that if I got to know them really well and the core of who they were, the other stuff will come. So that's always been my heart. And then, and then really growing up leaders, that's like my heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Because I want, to, I want to make sure that every kid that I meet understands that they were born with a gift in them and there's a passion burning in them. And if they can merge those two, they will lead well in anything God calls them to do. They just will with integrity, with understanding of leading within. So there's a program that um, came into my life last summer with Coach Michael Bird out of Nashville. And um, we were talking about that. So he was building this program and I just stepped, I just said, who's, like, who's who can do this? I want to do it. I, know, I, I want I, in. <laughs> I was sitting there at a leadership training for me and he starts talking about it. So we had a lunch break. And so I went over to him and I said, can you tell me about this successful thing? Because he was kind of just giving you little pieces of it. But I was trying to put this vision in my head. And so he started telling me, you know, we want to build leaders and confidence and, you know, have kids, you know, know when they walk in a room who they are and what they bring to the table. I'm like, I'm your girl. Yeah. Like I just said, who's leading this for you? And he said, well, I'm working on that. And I said, would you let me have the opportunity? Yeah. And I said, let me tell you about me and what I what I feel value I can bring because this is truly my heartbeat and yeah. what I love to do for kids. So that's how it all happened. So I'm doing that. And um, so that is uh, through Nashville, but we're traveling. We're taking it on the road. I teach every Tuesday night. So I have a different teaching concept. So like every month, it's a different teaching concept for like February. I'm teaching on growing the leadership and committing from within. Um, and using your heart and your passion and, and what you're fueled with um, and making sure that you are, t- I'm teaching these kids like who their inner circle is and, and good mentors and fueling themselves properly, mind, body, soul, and all of it. Yeah. And then when they are in college or growing out to the big world, you know, to get a job, they have some really strong skills and foundations to lead well and to live a really great life and to, and to serve. So, That's- yeah. That's amazing. I'm super I was literally about to say, "Will you give us a nugget?" So you just gave us two nuggets. So good job. Okay. Because I was going to say, "Give us a little nugget of what you try to teach." So yeah, talking that's about good. Mm-hmm. the 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 leading from the passions within right. and uh, being fueled by that, and then putting the people around you, the mentors yes. and stuff. Uh, that's, I, so I, that's, huge. that's huge. That's huge. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. So that's what we're working on, and um, you know how to navigate in school with drama, and really building their confidence in who they were created to be you know, and, and holding their heads up and, and how to do interview skills and how to, how to bring what their gifts are to the table and be proud of it and be confident 
Um, I think that's lacking in some areas. And I know as an educator, those are things we couldn't teach in the classroom. We didn't have time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would love to, but we have so much academics to teach. You, you think about those things and you try to do your best. But I think that God knows that there are, you know, we need to have that support and that network around for these kids. And we need to all be pouring into them. And that is, that is truly my heart of what I want to do. And it's what I've always wanted to do. And I have been doing it. It's just been through seasons of my life, yeah. you know, but now I've had the opportunity to help with success school out of Nashville. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Man, your story is so amazing. Thank Very you. inspiring story today. <laughs> Thank you. Very inspiring. I think there are a lot of people that are going to be able to relate to a lot of yeah. what you shared today. I hope um, so. And so I want, you know, you guys to know that uh, she's around now. Uh, I'm around. Glad to have her. Thank uh, you. She does reside in Wilkes County. Yes. So if you're watching from Wilkes County, you're a little closer. But but people in the community, like if you um, are looking for a voice, um, she's an amazing voice. We've been able to be a part of a uh, of a couple of uh, one one event that she did in Washington, and then uh, helping her. Um, you know, uh, connect with some new stuff here, mm -hmm. uh, serving a little bit at the church now. And she yeah, was so excited yeah. about that. I'm so excited. Um, so Josie. I, I, I think she's going to be a group. great voice. I Thank mean, you. a great, so. a great, um, yeah. compliment to, uh, this community. And yeah. I just want to tell you, Thank you for just being authentic. Because yeah. when I see you, one of the things that I really see is authenticity. I see you mm -hmm. trying to be you yeah. um, and not trying to be somebody else or trying to imitate mm -hmm. um, what you've seen in someone else that you aspire to. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me that for a long time, that was a that was a hard thing for mm -hmm. me not to do yeah. um, as somebody who was trying to lead. Yeah. Um, but I see you and I'm just like, man, this is one of the most authentic people <laughs> I think you. that I've ever oh, met. You're that's completely sweet. upfront. You're very transparent. Um, I think about our conversation with communion that one oh, time about the transparency yeah. of that moment and how powerful transparency is. And mm -hmm. there are so few people like you that truly are transparent. Um, and I just see so many about you, so so many things about your life that is just yeah. a great example. Thank you. Um, and I just encourage you to keep doing that. Oh, well, um, that I authenticity will. is what yeah. God can use. That sincerity that you carry. Thank um, you. And yeah. you're very passionate. Yeah. Uh, and that's another thing I appreciate about you because I'm a very passionate person by nature. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I don't have to conjure up ever. It's something that is yeah. naturally in me. If anything, I kind of have to pull the reins that's back me. sometimes. I get you. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand. Sometimes I let the car yeah. get ahead of the horse uh, because yeah. passion drives me so much. And I yeah. see that. And oh, I yeah. see we have that kindred spirit yeah. there. And I just appreciate your passion yeah. Thank um, you. and your excitement. Well, I came from a home with two passionate parents, and um, you know, one thing my dad used to always say, and I'd love to share this, um, he was just a great man of God, and um, he would always say, and my mother, I think that's why we have so many Tiffany lamps, because all the different cuts <laughs> of glass and colors and bright, you know, he'd always just say, you know, God just creates these beautiful mosaic pieces of art mosaic, and glass, and and we are a piece of that of that art and fitting in there and and the edges touch so many different people's lives and organizations and that's what we're called to do so i just kind of see all of this with you and in your community and what you're doing and the outreach um this mosaic art that you're building is is absolutely tremendous and beautiful well thank you yeah i love thank it thank you well we so, love yeah. you thank you we appreciate you <laughs> so now you guys know that she's available she does yeah. do the success uh school stuff mm -hmm. if anybody's looking to find out more info about please. that we'll do yeah. a little quick plug for her uh thank so you. please reach out to her she's on all the social media platforms and everything and uh, very active on facebook i know a lot of you at least know that one platform well enough to be able to contact her so listen if there's anything that she can do if there's a part of her story yeah, um, that touched you man let yeah. her know just say or comment below Low tiger in the comment and just yeah. say, man, you know, this part of your story, I can relate to that. And this yes. has helped me so much. Uh, build her up and uh, mm -hmm. let her know that she's made a difference in your life. But um, we just appreciate you. I, I've been you so coming. looking forward to this conversation oh, you're sweet. Thank uh, you. I was because excited. we've had so much fun every time we've yeah, talked. We do. Um, it's, we it's have amazing. so much fun. Yeah. So I knew this was going to well, be very easy. And I easy. appreciate, I just want to say <laughs> it's brought so much to my life, just releasing some, some handcuffs. Yeah. And I have so much more freedom in in what I'm doing in God's work now. And I think I've just kind of felt a little, little handcuffed Come and on. I appreciate you 
yeah. giving that key and unlocking it a little bit. Thank you. I hey, appreciate I saw, that. I'm watching you operate mm -hmm. more in freedom. I yeah, see that. Definitely. definitely freedom. It's amazing. You are a free spirit. That <laughs> yeah. is for sure. So, so thank God for that, yeah. man. Thank, thank you. you for being yeah, with us. Yeah, thank you. So, I appreciate it. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for joining us on the White Porch today uh, with Kelly Eisler. And um, again, if you have any questions, comments, testimonies, any of that, let us know. We'd love to connect with you. And um, we'll be back next week. Uh, on the White Porch with White Porch Conversations okay. next Thursday. So I hope y'all have a great night. Bye, guys. Thank you. The White Porch Conversations.